give you a little bit of an overview on how to uh, set up the Comgo Z1 laser in both laser gerbil, sometimes pronounced gerbil, laser GRBL, and light burn coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned at the very beginning here, we're going to set up this Comgo Z1 laser from Comgro in both laser gerbil and in light burn. And I'll take you over here on the computer, well, I'll show you how it gets set up, then we'll come back here and I'll show you some of the movements on the laser itself. I have it sitting on a piece of wood here instead of the cardboard I have on my saw top table here because well, I had a little accident once and caught some cardboard on fire. So I always set it on a piece of wood. I'll be making a spoil board for this. Uh, and you'll see the graphic when we get into uh, setting this up in laser gerbil. You'll see, I'll load the graphic and you'll get to see it. And also where to get it from. But that's going to be the subject of another video. So let's get on to the computer. Okay, we're going to start out with laser gerbil. Sometimes pronounced laser gerbil. It's laser G-R-B-L. And again, if you... Uh, and it's also best if you download this directly from their website and then in install it. You want to have your laser turned on and you want to have the USB connected. So once you open up Laser Gerbil, you'll need to find your COM port. In this case, I already had it installed here. In my case, it's on COM5. So you need to connect. So the little deal up here, if you hover your mouse over these things, they'll tell you what they do and we are connected. Now right now it's locked so obviously here I can't move it or anything. Little padlock down here unlocks it. There's also a command you can put into the gerbil file that will disable that but I for now we'll just leave it as it is here keep it simple. From here you can move you should be able to move your laser of course, you can't see this moving. And I need to move it more than a millimeter at a time. Let's go 10 millimeters. Yep, moves just fine. It's just fine there. Take it home, and it comes home. Uh, to load your file in here, and I'll uh, get a file here that I'm going to use to burn a grid that's going to be in a future video. But I will uh, I'll load it up here. As it happens, the uh, layout of this is identical to the Ortur Laser Master 2 as far as the bed size, which is 400 millimeters square. So there's already a grid on Thingiverse, and I'll put a link in the description of where you can find this file. I'm going to use that grid instead of creating one. So we'll open this up here, and this is what it is going to look like. And then all I need to do is run it. Of course, I would always want to frame that first. In fact, I'll frame it. This frames very slowly. You can follow the cursor here, and you can see this little blue cursor. You can follow that, and you can see where it's going. Okay, it hit hard limit, so we need to reset it to continue. Right there, a little lightning bolt, that's reset. Of course, then you have to unlock it again, and I can take it home. Okay, we're back home. So that's all there is to getting it set up in Laser Gerbil. It's pretty simple. If uh, it's your very first time putting this on your computer, you may need to install the CH340 driver. And it's just like this. It's, it's included with it. Mine, it was already installed here, but I, I did it again to show you the process. So from here, we'll move over to getting this configured in light burn. We'll close laser gerbil here. Open up light burn. There again, you can uh, download this from light burn's website, get the most current version. This is uh, has a 30-day free trial. And I'm not sponsored by uh, light burn. I just use their software almost exclusively. Uh, license is $60. That gives you uh, 
the opportunity to put it on two computers. And if you say, uh, pretty pleased with sugar on top, they'll actually give you a third license for free. Additional licenses, I believe, were $10. I own seven of them. I have quite a few lasers. Once you get it opened up here, you're going to have to add this laser. Again, have your laser turned on and connected. Okay, when this first opens, it depends on how you have your setup. And mine defaults to a, a Saint Smart Pro Verb. That's not what we're going to be using on here. So I need to go to devices, and this will give me a list of some of my lasers here. And we could try find my laser, but I think this is going to be too new to be in their database. But we'll give it a shot here. And I didn't think it would find it. So we'll go back. Cancel this. So create manually, and this is not difficult. Click on create manually there. It's a Gerbil, GRBL. Click next. Of course, we're serial USB connection. And we're going to call this the Come Go Z1. Now, oh, it's going to ask you your work area. Depending on whether you have yours set up for metric or SAE, which would be inches, uh, mine's set up for inches. Well, it's 400 millimeters square. 400 millimeters is 15.75 inches, approximately. So you would set that. Then next. And this homes, so we want it to auto home on startup to the front left. So it gives you a little bit of a summary there. It's rounded up to 16 by 16 with the origin at the front left. So you click finish. There's my Comgo Z1. Okay, there's another little thing I want to do here yet. Okay, now the next thing you're going to want to do is pick your laser out from the of course, if you don't have a bunch of them, you don't have to do that. Come go Z1, come 5, we're connected. Now I need to go up here to edit. Device settings. Right here where it says enable laser fire button. This will allow you to uh, push a button there and fire your laser at low power so you can aim it. And I always like to have the laser on when framing. I do use a uh, very low power for that, but it lets me see that everything is going to be on the border. You can also do this when you click frame just by holding down the shift key. We'll click OK. Okay, there again, depending on how you have your light burn set up, these windows, you can move them around, you can tile them, you can do all kinds of things with them. Uh, you can click on fire, and it should fire your laser. You need to put power in here. I'm going to put this in at 1%. See how bright that is. And that's pretty hard to see, but you can see it. So that's all there is to setting this up in the light burn. I'll kind of show you here how I lay a project out. So let's open something up here. So I have quite a few tiles here I can use. Uh, we do a tremendous number of... Uh, ceramic tile engravings. But let's take uh, let's take this little 9 by 12 skeleton on a beach there. So there he is. This fits on a uh, 9 by 12 tile. Just to kind of give you an idea. So we won't get into the power thing right here, but each one of these colors represents a layer. I have these grouped right now. But you can look at that. Go up here to edit. Whoops. Excuse me. Go up here to Window, then Cuts and Layers. That will open up a window right here, which will give you all your cuts and layers. And these are the speeds. And this is actually set up for a 5 watt laser. I would have to do some modifications here on this if I was going to use it on this 10 watt laser. But that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. I'm not going to get into a light burn tutorial. Um, if you want to really learn Lightburn, uh, Lightburn has tutorials on their website and YouTube. And there's a guy called the Louisiana Hobby Guy. 
and he does excellent tutorials and lessons on using light burn. So therefore I'm not going to uh, rehash this. He's done an excellent job. There's no need for me to duplicate it and I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description. Once you have everything set up and you've framed you know, a full grid like I just did, I, I noticed that it was hitting the back and then it was hitting hard limit before it got all the way this direction. However, the head was not even close to this front bar. So there, I have this off. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to show you what you need to adjust. Right here is what is the hard limit for the y-axis travel. So what you're going to need to do is unplug this. There's a screw right here, two and a half M&Ms. That's the uh, screwdriver I have here, the driver. You can also use a regular hex key wrench. And you may need you need to adjust that just a little bit. You may have to tweak with it a, a few times to get it exactly where you want it. I actually set it the last time I set it too close. Whoop. It's a hammerhead nut on there, so if you take it out too far, now I forgot where I was. But you can get kind of an idea here by bringing your head up, then bringing it back this way to where this wheel makes that limit. So right now I've, I've got to go that way a little bit yet. So I lost my original position. Don't let this just drop while you're doing this either. You don't want it clear tight against this or it'll hit the screws on the back of the power supply. So I'm going to try about there. It may take a little bit of experimenting. So we'll give this a shot. Oh, and don't forget to plug that back in. So I've turned this back on. And do a reset and an unlock. And then I'm going to frame my grid again. First I'm going to take it home. Now we'll frame this. I noticed before when I was framing that it was hitting the back and then hitting the hard limit as it came back this direction before it made its full square. It was about three or four millimeters short. So that's why I had to adjust that limit right there. And I hit the hard limit again, so I need to set that back just a little bit. Okay, got it. Like I say, a little minor adjustment there on that limit switch. It was just a little bit too far that way. You're going to have to play with it a little bit to uh, get it just dialed in perfect. I'm sure when they do this at the factory they have like an approximate measurement that they use. But otherwise, a little tweak you may need to do if you want to frame your full 400 millimeter square. Otherwise it ends up being about 397. It's about 3 millimeters short on the y-axis travel. Otherwise, that's how you get it set up in Laser Gerbil and in Lightburn. Uh, there again, I'm not sponsored by either company, but I wanted to explain how to set this up because I get a lot of questions on, well, okay, I got my laser now, now how do I get it into that and how do I make it work and all that. And once again, Louisiana hobby guy, Rich down there, he's got a great tutorial on using Lightburn. He's got lots of libraries. He's got a forum you can join and download free files. If you're just getting into this, that's really the way to go. So, coming up the next video, I'm going to be making a spoil board for this out of MDF. Attaching it to the spoil board, I'll show you how I do that. That'll be in the next one. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Comgo. Z1. By Comgro. Don't try to say that too fast, because you won't be able to do it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.